pharmaceutical is our family business. In India, I was a FDA inspector, and my duty was to assure that the people get the quality drugs. I believe from my childhood the integrity is the way of living. So we always lived with ethical practices, not believing in easy money. And I taught my two boys that if you are honest and if you will work hard, then you will get the fruits. So we only came with twenty dollars to this country. We go with to America only with one condition, that we have to go there, work hard, educate ourselves, and make it on our own. We all started working. I had a job on the third day uh, in New York City at Hemsley Palace Hotel. That was a fun experience. When I started working here in New York City. My brother got me a job in a candy store at the age of 15. Well, I'll tell you the rest of the story. Uh, good morning. Great to see all of you here. Uh, it's, uh, I have a little history with uh, Silicon Valley and uh, technology companies. Uh, my career had started with technology companies, but I'm going to talk about it in a few minutes. So, uh, good morning. This is a very important conference for entrepreneurs worldwide. Uh, it has grown enormously. Over the years, many great speakers have spoken here, and I'm humbled to follow their footsteps. I believe it or not, this is the first time I have a written speech. Uh, I have even, I mean, this is, I used to be an actor, so back in my acting days, I used to have the written script. Um, before I kick off the speech, uh, let me tell you a bit about my life story. You heard a few things. I grew up in Gujarat, enjoying a relatively comfortable life. We were not rich, but we were comfortable. And as I just told you, as a young man, I was an actor. I was also a decent cricket player and a popular student leader. So I did not study much, did the other thing. Uh, in fact, different political parties tried to recruit me back in India. I would have been campaigning right now. Uh, however, as they say, man proposes and God disposes, and fate intervened in the strangest of ways. My father was an industrial pharmacist. He had applied for a green card in 1968, but changed his mind and stayed on in India. Life went on until years later, in 1986, green card arrived in the post for the entire family. I was 20 years old, and at that time, just graduated from Commerce College. And now, I wanted to go to America. I always wanted to do new things. So I convinced my dad, and he agreed on one condition that he would not transfer any money from India to US. We had to start from scratch. And like a good Gujarati, he turned out to be true to his word. <laughs> so I went from a life of relative comfort to faring newspapers from Hemsley Palace Hotel to Trump Tower in New York City. It was February of 1987. It was cold, and I grew up in Ahmedabad with 100 degree temperature, 90, all of a sudden freezing. But whatever came, in short, life did not turn out to be a bed of roses when I first arrived here. Now that you know a bit about me, I want to tell you three stories, and these will relate to the entrepreneurs to be or who are already entrepreneurs. Each one has some lessons for me, but all of you may draw your own lessons. Uh, and hopefully it will be useful. So I'm gonna start with the starting at the bottom. 
I started working in a gift store, as I told you, and I delivered newspapers for the first few weeks. I was not thrilled about the job, but it turned out that job gave me some of the most valuable experiences at young age. It taught me that no work is too low or too dirty to do. It is thanks to my tough start that I have come to understand the importance, significance, and value of hard work. In India, I did not learn that because I was given what I wanted. So I was a cricket player, student leader, actor, uh, but here I had to be on my own. At the gift store, I learned how to serve customers. Very important, all the time. Work with colleagues with highly dissimilar, who are highly dissimilar to me and acquire new skills quickly. Because of my hard work, dedication, and probably Gujarati business acumen, the gift store soon entrusted me with opportunity of starting new stores, kickstarting me on my entrepreneurial journey at age 20. There is another story I must tell you. I used to walk down Fifth Avenue to save money. Even taking the subway was a pinch back then. And I saw well-dressed people walking down the street, towering skyscrapers, and names of big companies on those skyscrapers. I told myself then that I would create a great company and be a big success. Ironically, that is what President Trump calls me, big success. <laughs> I play golf with him sometimes. Um, there is another story. I mean, even, even as I was working, I also attended a small university called NJCU for one and a half years. It gave me a sense of belonging in America. As soon as I started working for Fortune, and soon I started working for Fortune 500 companies. And wherever I worked, I gave it 100%. Developed deep relationship and added value. From my earliest days in America, I brought passion, purpose, enthusiasm. I was always pumped up and always happy. So that is one of the most important lessons I recommend for everybody. Be happy, stay happy. Love what you do and work without expectations. You know, Gita captures this remarkably. Story number two, embrace failure. It is your best teacher. I know everyone says this in entrepreneurial conferences, and I do not want to spout a cliche, so let me tell you a deeply personal story. In 1997, I started a technology consulting company with three friends in Florida, and we were modestly successful. Then, being ambitious, we started an enterprise wireless applications company in 1999. Soon we were flying high. Our company was growing fast. We had big name customers and employed 60 super smart engineers with big dreams. Then the dot-com bubble crashed. The venture capitalist who had invested in the company could not take a long-term view. They forced a fire cell of its valuable assets. As a result, I went from net worth of $40 million to zero in a single day. Yet, I thank God and the family for letting me continue. It gave me some valuable life lessons, and I want to summarize with three lessons. Lesson number one, in business, always work with partners like true partners. Do not focus on a non-value-added matters. Resolve any conflict or all conflicts within 24 hours. Sleep over, but next day resolve it. Don't carry on. Conflict destroys value and partnership builds value. 
Number two, I call it, call it Yoda. Combine, combining experience with young energy always works. What I mean is that we have young people in the team who bring new ideas, fresh energy, and we must have experienced people who can navigate pitfalls as well as help in scaling up the company. Lesson number three, look for a long-term investors. We were designing wireless applications in 1999, way ahead of our times. If we had a long-term investors and had followed the first two things, so not only the investors, we had to follow the first two things that I just mentioned, we would have stayed ahead. Instead, we crashed. So I always look for investors who keep an eye on the long term and care less about how much of the company they own, but rather how much of the value we can create, how big the company we can make. If I had not failed in 2001, I might not be standing here before you. So whatever does not kill you makes you stronger. Failure means you took risk. You did something outside your comfort zone and you learned some valuable lessons. So wherever or whenever you think of failure, think of this famous Urdu share. I'm gonna try, my Urdu is not that great. Gilte hai shah sawar hi maidane jang mein. Gilte hai shah sawar hi maidane jang mein. Wo tifl kya girenge? Wo tifl kya girenge? Jo chalte hai ghutno ke bal pe. I tried. <laughs> Story number three, creating a big success. So in 2001, I crashed like a Greek hero Icarus and fell to the earth. At that time, my wife, she's here, uh, told me to dust myself off and get back into the saddle. In 2002, together with my father and my brother, we started a family business in pharmaceuticals, which were our roots in India. By that time, I had entrepreneurial and business experience. My father and brother had industry knowledge. We had humble beginning, but our overriding passion was to win and be successful in America. This was a new challenge for us. The first thing we did was to find great people. For us, everyone we hired was family. We were one unit. This is very important. We were all united in our desire to win. We believed deeply. Why not us? Why not now? It's a mindset. And the first hundred people who joined Amneal had a terrific mojo. And that mojo has fueled Amneal's growth to even this day. Since its founding days, Amneal has always focused on people, teams, values, culture, integrity. We have made sure that we maintain our culture for every single new hire. Very tough job, so when you become big, do not take your eyes off. The culture, the character, the integrity is must with the bigger purpose in life. Today we have 6,000 people working at Amneal. So remember, it's all about people until your world of machine learning takes over. <laughs> the second thing we did was simple. We defined ourselves as the benchmark for the best quality. We were making pharmaceutical products which are taken by our family member, our friends, anybody in America is our family. So we have a high responsibility to produce the best quality products. P so we build great relationships. Second thing we did is we build great relationships everywhere with customers, suppliers, local communities. From day one, when I met customers, 
Everything came from the heart. We were utterly and constantly sincere. So people trusted us. Big companies gave us small business to test us out, and we always exceeded their expectations. For us, customers, suppliers, and communities were all family. We brought love and passion into the business. We focused on long-term relationships. There are times when you need partners, and there are other times when they need you. And you have to build trust to ride out rough times. You cannot gouge each other during times of need. Remember, a friend in need is a friend indeed. That has been my overriding motto, and that is why I'm blessed with dear friends from around the world. The third thing we did was to find an investor who believed in us, wanted value creation over the long term. There's Sadia Investments from Newport Beach. Tushar is the only partner I have since day one. Today, we are still partners in all businesses we have built. Our first and only investors are now family to us. Uh, our goal has been to grow companies. Not think about an exit. We never did. You cannot build a great company if you keep exit in mind. We are builders, not flippers. And that is how we have created value. Today, the enterprise value of our companies is more than $10 billion. My father, my brother, and I, three Patels from Sadar Patel's land, have created companies from zero to 10 billion from 2002 to 2019. We have done so because of original goodness. As I end this speech, I must speak a bit about original goodness. Many of you might have heard, greed is good, nice guys finish last. I strongly and vehemently disagree. Good guys can finish first and become successful. Just look at how Satya and Sundar have led two of the world's top two companies. It's from original goodness. As, so let me now turn to the practice of what I just called you, original, what I just called original goodness. For me, it is purifying the mind and soul. It is to think as one world, one family. Yoga, meditation, compassion, all helps. They give me the right mindset to succeed. I stay in the present moment even if I plan for the future. I find enthusiasm in the magic of life. It's so beautiful everywhere I turn around. And it's not now, it's always been like that. Family, friends, philanthropy. After all, what is, the what is the point of creating a big success if, if you do not serve society? It's pointless. In my assessment, our great country, America, the most beautiful, has been the most successful civilization, and this is my own assessment, in the world because people have cared and served for the social good for, from days of Carnegie, J.P. Morgan, Rockefellers. Today, people like Bill Gates and Warren Buffett are following that rich tradition. Being part of it gives my life most meaning. On that note, I'll leave you with a bhajan from Adi Kavi Narsi Mehta, who lived from 1414 to 1481. Note that this version was favorite of Mahatma Gandhi. Vaishnava janto tene re kahiye, je peed parai jane re. Par dukhe upkar kare toe, man abhiman naane re. Thank you. Shukriya. Danyawad. Chirag, as, as I was listening to the speech, 
uh, <clears throat> one thing struck me. You know, in Silicon Valley, I think the idea of building a company is tends to be somewhat transactional. That you know, if you have a, a you know, if you have an employee that's not pulling his weight, cut him or cut that person quickly. You know, team we go from stage one to stage two. The team cannot, you know, the same management team cannot this thing, so get rid of them. What you are talking about is a completely different paradigm. And in some ways, it looks like you are combined with the, you know, the, the best elements of American uh, with uh, Indian values. That is correct. So your first point, there is a human potential that all of us have. And to recognize that, first within you and in your team. This is why I mentioned, why not us, why not now? Anybody can do it. You have that potential. It is to get there and get there with conviction. So we, I mean, this is a record may, uh, say you guys may not be the good management, but up to, Last year, when we handed off as a public company to somebody, our new team, my brother and I, we let go three people out of 4,000 or 5,000 people. Wow. So, wow. We recognize the human potential, work with people, give them a chance. I think that builds, yes, sometimes it's a mismatch, so make sure you, you put them where their passion is and what they're good at it and let them, give them freedom to succeed. And yes, I do combine all the time spirituality with uh, American business uh, mindset and American giving mindset. Americans, I don't have the exact stats, but they end up giving 90% of their wealth for the so social good, which is what one of the main reasons wh what we have built here in last 200 years. Uh, compared to India. In India, we can, uh, if not even 19, 90, let's go to 19, we can abolish the, the water problems, the, the stunting issues, and uh, uh, the sanitation issues, and uh, maternal and child health uh, uh, in no time. And India does not have time. Well, you know, we are sort of running out of time, so uh, where is Savita? Savita, oh, there she is, the bright color clothes. So anyone who has a question to ask, please uh, come to Savita. And uh, please come to Savita, don't wait there. And uh, we have time for, I think, two more questions after this, or maybe one more question. What yes. A, what an awesome journey. It's really in, inspiring to hear all the values that you inculcated as growing your business and grew it from nothing to where it is now. Thank so you. what's next? What's next in your journey? Is India on your horizon as you grow your pharmaceutical generics, generics uh, market? And how would you deal with uh, the issues that India would have in terms of uh, the other large players that are already in the market, um, Cadilla and Sun Pharma, Dr. Reddy's, et cetera? But great journey and congratulations thank and thank you. Thank you. So I'll answer your first question. Uh, First, which is, uh, what are we doing now? So we have obviously a leading position in America for generics and specialty drugs, and we're growing on a branded side, and we're investing uh, a lot of uh, resources and money to uh, innovations, discoveries, so which would save lives. And that is, we've been doing that for the last nine years as we were building generic company, we did that as well. So we hope to bring those therapy to, to, the, uh, to American people and global, because that has a different mission now. We would, so far we saved money for American people, now we would save lives, which will feel good. And uh, the, uh, India's need, the other focus is we are uh, tied with uh, IITs, in India and NIIPH, which is, in, which is Indian Institute of Public Health, to form a, a, call a something called WIN Foundation, W-I-N, 
to bring everybody together and see if we can make a 10x impact rather than incremental small. Uh, so many people have done a lot of things, bring them together, analyze, use the technology to launch new solutions and, and, and think it through how can they be launched sustainability, sustainably and uh, scalably. Because you don't want to do a project to help 100 village and then it dies. So we're going through. So that's very exciting as well. Thank you. <laughs> next one, next one. Hi, uh, my name is Karanveer Mundre. I run two companies. I run a life sciences consulting firm and I run a media company uh, back in India. It's called Atharva Marcom. Uh, my question is that, uh, you know, India has uh, the structure of government and the, the regulatory framework uh, probably uh, has a lot of roadblocks in terms of pharmaceutical companies growing and, and succeeding the way, the way you do. Uh, do you think you could, uh, you know, uh, have any suggestions for India in terms of the laws, regulations, how it can make things smoother in terms of our, uh, you know, highway, so that uh, pharma entrepreneurs can grow the way you have? And would you have the same success in India, uh, what yes. you had over here? Definitely. India needs to become a research country, IP country. India needs to change the mindset and not be the the low cost producer of goods, but own the IP, create IP. And I'm seeing that. Today, the IIT class, 80% of them are starting new company, IP driven companies. Pharma has to do the same thing. If country like Switzerland with 6 million people have Novartis and Roche, India has what? All generic companies. It has to do research, it has to move away. If you want to create law, and China is now in, a, in research. So the government has to incentivize research-based companies. And the whole mindset has to change. Because we can do it. It's not like India doesn't have potential. All those scientists come from India or engineers here or Europe, and they create all these technologies. Why can't we own it and create it in India as well? <clears throat> Okay, Hi, Chirag, I'll, I'll, I'm this Suresh is, Kumar from We'll New take Jersey. this question and one more, and that's it. Sorry, we are out of time. Yeah. And by the way, uh, by Chirag, he would, after a while, would be in the media, this thing. So if you want, you can catch up there. <laughs> Chirag, thanks for your message that good guys succeed, which is exactly the same message that the Zoom Z CEO conveyed to us yesterday. So I appreciate that. Uh, I do not understand Urdu, so could you, do you mind converting the Urdu sonnet that you first quoted in English? Urdu. <laughs> the Urdu. <laughs> Look, uh, uh, you guys can do your, it, all it says is you have to be courageous and a warrior out there, be in the game, right? You got to be Wayne Gretzky uh, on the stadium, right? Uh, moving the puck or Jerry Rice. Rice uh, in the stadium. You cannot be the weak person on your, uh, uh, like, cannot even walk. So it doesn't have courage or mindset or winning attitude. Uh, so that's all that means. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this is the last question. This is the last question. Thank you. Hello, Chirag. So I'm Srini Madala, program chair for uh, youth programs in Silicon Valley here, a chapter member. So I have a quick question, and uh, I'm actually moved by your experience when you said you're walking and to save a couple of pennies for subway, and uh, uh, it's a moving ex uh, ex example that you gave us. I want to understand what things you're doing for underprivileged youth and people who have shared similar experiences with you who are currently uh, you know, in India or here or in New York or wherever you they are. What kind of things are you doing to help them or... Uh, you know, your foundation is doing. Sorry, I didn't get the whole... Um, it was not clear, sorry, oh, because the, it echoes I, here. I'm sorry. One sentence question, please. Okay. What things are you doing to help the young people who are in the same situation as you were in New York one time, looking for mentoring or assistance or something? Uh, we, are, we are funding young people's companies as well as uh, we want to promote more entrepreneurship. Uh, that is uh, the permanent solution for anything to do uh, to change, make social changes. So hugely interested and invested in that. 
All right, we are, unfortunately we are out of time. I know there are a lot of uh, interest in asking questions, but please join me in, uh, Thank you. in thanking Isit Chirai. Thank you, good luck, Kai. Thank you. Thank you.